postseason college football. Tonight, the Liberty Bowl Classic is renewed for the 14th time as the Iowa State Cyclones, led by George Amundsen, clash with the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The Liberty Bowl, another ABC sports exclusive, is brought to you by Chevrolet. The key to a new Chevrolet could be the key to a happy holiday. By Borkham Rift Tobacco, imported from Sweden. Dr. Grable, three smoked pipes made for each other. By Noxzema Medicated Shave. The closer you shave, the more you need creamy, soothing Noxzema. And by Brute for Men by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything. Brute by Fabergé. And here by the mighty bend of the Mississippi River in Memphis, Tennessee, out in the field in cardinal and gold, we have the Iowa State Cyclones, coached by young Johnny Majors. This could be the last game for Johnny Majors at Iowa State University. Bud Wilkinson, Bill Fleming, and I are here as we now look at the mobile mascot of the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech, coached by young Bill Fulcher and his first year as head coach, Coming into the game with six victories, four defeats and a tie. One of the defeats was over Duffy Doherty's Michigan State Spartans. Iowa State and Georgia Tech. Iowa State out of Ames, Iowa with five wins, five losses, and a tie. That tie against powerful Nebraska, 23 to 23. So here on ABC, we kick off the major college bowl season of 1972. A near capacity crowd here on an evening that is perfect for college football, a temperature about 43 degrees. You see the Georgia Tech fan forming the tee to our right or the south end of Memphis Memorial Stadium. They are ready now to accompany former Metropolitan Opera star Marguerite Piazza, our national anthem. Memphis born Margarita Piazza here at Memorial Stadium in Memphis. A salute to Liberty tonight in the 14th annual Liberty Bowl as we'll return in one minute to Memphis. ABC Sports is proud to continue its Monday night showcase of football. Tonight's college football. The normal crew of three that you have heard uh, during the past few weeks, we've turned them out to pasture, at least for this season. Bill Fleming, Bud Wilkinson, and I are here hoping to enjoy this game with you and Bud. I mentioned Johnny Majors. The rumors are persistent that uh, he will move to the University of Pittsburgh. Well, they still are rumors, Chris, but I believe that they're strong enough that when you see Johnny Majors here on your screen, that tomorrow we probably will have a confirmation that he is leaving Iowa State. And the question, of course, is how does it affect tonight's game? Uh, it can go one of two ways. Uh, his players uh, know that this move is perhaps in the wind. Uh, Johnny's not going to talk to them about it until tomorrow morning. They may decide to get together and make one last great effort, or you can take the reverse side of that and say, well, gee, if maybe the coach is leaving, the game doesn't mean all that much. And, of course, Georgia Tech, uh, some upsetting news there just prior to the uh, Georgia game. Well, a great quarterback, uh, Eddie McShane, who is the holder of 15 school records and the leading career ground gainer at Tech, missed practice for three days prior to the Georgia game and was dropped from the team. 
Uh, he will not be here tonight. Uh, we've had uh, some problems with the other black members of the tech team wondering whether they should play. Uh, they've decided that they should, even though there were some rumors that some of them had physical threats of violence uh, made against them. Uh, some of the players, however, will wear black armbands tonight. Uh, their feeling on this being that they don't want to take sides in this dispute, but they do want to recognize the problems of blacks uh, throughout the world, and this would be a symbolic gesture on their part. Again, uh, this could go either way. It might uh, bring the tech team closer together because McShane won't be there, or all of the uh, lack of concentration on the game may cause them to play not as well as they could play if McShane were there. All right, thank you, bud. And nevertheless, we now go down on the field to meet the stars of our telecast from Iowa State and Georgia Tech, introduced by our colleague Bill Fleming. Bill. Thank you, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the lineups for tonight's game. First of all, for the Cyclones of Iowa State. At defensive safety from Burlington, Iowa, number 37, John Schweitzer. At right cornerback from Uniondale, New York, number 35, George Campbell. Defensive right end from Guthrie Center, Iowa, number 79, Marv Crooker. The Monster Man from Oak Park, Michigan, number 53, Ken Caratelli. <laughs> Defensive left tackle from Delray Beach, Florida, number 78, Larry Hunt. Middle linebacker from Hudson, New York, number 55, Ted Jarno. At center from Struthers, Ohio, number 54, Dave Pittman. At offensive right guard from Wichita, Kansas, number 75, Gary Murdoch. At split end from Edmondson, Arkansas, number 85, Ike Harris. At flanker from Valdosta, Georgia, number 81, Willie Jones. At quarterback from Aberdeen, South Dakota, number 12, George Amundsen. And the head coach of the Iowa State Cyclones, Johnny Majors. Coach. And now for the Yellow Jackets from Georgia Tech, a defensive right tackle from Atlanta, number 45, Tim Macy. Outside linebacker from Macon, Georgia, number 35, Steve Putnall. At linebacker from Rome, Georgia, number 32, Gary Carden. At linebacker from Durham, North Carolina, number 60, Bruce Elliott. At left defensive back from Baldwin, Pennsylvania, number 43, Mike McKenzie. Right defensive back from Charlotte, North Carolina, number 23, Randy Rhino. At split end from Atlanta, number 85, Jim Robinson. At guard from Vicksburg, Mississippi, number 70, Glenn Costello. Offensive tackle from Savannah, Georgia, number 74, the co-captain, Rick Lance. At tight end from Tallahassee, Florida, number 86, Mike Oven. At fullback from Lookout Mountain, Tennessee, number 42, Rob Healy. At quarterback from National City, California, number 11, Jim Stevens, and the head coach, Bill Fulcher. Yes, now let's go back to Bud Wilkinson, our ABC telecast booth. The game tonight really is the power and strength of Iowa State against the speed and quickness of Georgia Tech. Uh, Tech will be outweighed about 20 pounds a man on both offense and defense. Uh, Iowa State, Coach Bob Devaney of Nebraska says, is the most physical team we've played all year, and that's quite a compliment indeed. The Cyclones will operate out of an I formation with variations. They have three truly splendid pass receivers and number 85 Harris, number 91 Kreppel, and number 81 Jones. The key man in their attack, of course, is George Amundsen, number 12, their great quarterback. Amundsen is on the left of the screen there. He's the fourth leading total offense man in the country, averaging 271 yards per game, running and throwing the ball. Their defense is led by Corniff, as you can see, number 55, He's an inside linebacker who has made 79 unassisted tackles this year and has had 65 assists. The uh, Georgia Tech team playing without their regular quarterback, as we mentioned, will have number 11 at quarterback, Jim Stevens, a 6'1", 190-pounder, who's a junior college transfer, has had very little experience, and the pressure is really on him tonight. The leader of their defense is number 23, Randy Rhino, a defensive halfback who has made eight interceptions and is leading the country in pass interceptions with eight. And now back to Chris Schenkel. And there's the opening kickoff as the toss was won by Georgia Tech. They elect to kick because of a 10 mile an hour wind undoubtedly, which in this case was to their back. It goes into the end zone. It'll be a touchback for Iowa State. If you're watching in color, they're in Cardinal and Goal out of Ames, Iowa. Coming into the game, this is the second bowl uh, since Johnny Majors has taken over as head coach. They played in the Sun Bowl last year. And here you see the offensive line for Iowa State. 
And it'll be interesting to see the backfield now. Number 12, Amundsen. Great athlete, strong. 81 is Willie Jones, and uh, 48 is Larry Marquardt. So from the 20-yard line, it's a first and 10 for Iowa State. The Cyclones may have lost the ball. Let's see, and Georgia Tech recovers. Chip Everhart came in to recover that loose ball for Tech as Moses Moore of Miami, Florida, fumbled it. So a tough break for the Cyclones and the Ramblin' Wrecks of Georgia Tech have it at the 18-yard line. First and 10, bud. Bill Fulcher hoped that Tech would get off to a good start uh, with the trouble that Tech has uh, had. He was hoping that the Cyclones wouldn't blow him out of the park in the first quarter, and that fumble certainly set them up in business. From the 18-yard line, it's quarterback Jim Stevens, number 11, sending a man in motion to the far side. From the I formation, a good four-yard pickup on the play. The basis of the Tech offense will be the quarterback option play with the spread out passing and the drop back passing. They'll throw the ball, or at least they plan to, about half the time. They believe that Stevens is a fine passer, and he has a great split end, Jim Robinson, who has caught 48 passes this year. All right, it was Southall, the fullback, who uh, carried on the play for three yards approximately, so it'll be a second down and six at the Iowa State. 15, back to pass. Well, it's good he had it plenty high enough and hard enough because there were about five defenders for the Cyclones. It was intended for Oven, number 86 of Georgia Tech, so it brings up a third down and seven. Third snap from scrimmage coming up. If you just join us on the opening kickoff, going into the end zone, coming out to the 20 for a touchback, Iowa State fumbled on the very first play. It was recovered by Tech at the 18 of the Cyclones. And here is Stevens, number 11, from National City, California, coming over the near sideline as time has been called. The referee indicating it now as Jim Stevens here on the near sideline. And on the far right of your screen, that is young Bill Fulcher, the head coach of Georgia Tech. We'll return to Memorial Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee, for more action in the Liberty Bowl after this message. Back again in Memphis, Tennessee, the 14th annual Liberty Bowl after 47 seconds on the football clock and one fumble by Iowa State on the opening snap. Georgia Tech now in the white have a third down and seven at approximately the 15 and a half. Jim Stevens along with Healy and Southall. Those are the two setbacks behind him. 89 is, is Owens. Let's see what Stevens will do. To the line of scrimmage and that's it. Hit hard on the play. By number 53, Caratelli, who is from Oak Park, Michigan. He is a senior monster man, and he played his position well. Both teams will use basically a 4-4 defensive alignment, four men on the line of scrimmage and four linebackers with three deep secondary. And with a fourth down and about seven coming up, we're going to have a field goal attempt by Bobby Thigpen, who's kicked three of four this year, and it'll come from about the 32-yard line. Correction, it wasn't Thigpen that did the booting. It was Bonifay, and it's good. Bonifay comes through for the rambling wreck, and they have taken a three-point advantage of the fumble on the very first play following the opening kickoff and kicking the ball 32 yards. And But uh, there you have the underdog leading. We talked uh, about the difference in size, Chris. Uh, Tech's offensive line uh, interior average is 216 pounds, and Iowa State on defense is 223 against them. The Tech defensive team averages 215 pounds along the line, and Iowa State's offense 235. So it really is a question of quickness and speed on the part of Tech against the size and strength of Iowa State. But we indicated that Tech had won the uh, toss and elected to kick. Of course, they still have the wind to their back, and it's Wheeler, number 10, that'll do the booting. And that's uh, the Bobby Dodd technique. Uh, kick and let them make their mistakes. It's part of the tradition of Georgia Tech. All right, number 81 is a fine split end or flanker back Willie Jones who is great on kick return. Let's hope he gets the ball to see him run. Out he comes to the 5 10. Lost his footing on the natural turf here in Memphis Tennessee. Bring in out approximately 18 yards from the end zone of course and the play will actually start now for the Cyclones from Iowa State at the 13. The quarterback, George Amundsen of Aberdeen, South Dakota, who last year as a tailback 
played that position, hopefully to help his team gain over 1,300 yards. Quite an athlete. 13 letters in high school for the 13, first and 10 for Iowa State. Look at that man go. And he brings it out to approximately the 23. Perhaps enough for a first down. It's very, very close. Maybe just a bit short. 13 minutes, 33 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Georgia Tech is in the lead by a score of three to nothing. The latter part of the season, Iowa State was severely hampered by injuries. Their great receivers, Harris and Kreppel, were both out. And Mike Strawn, number 33, their tailback, who has a 4.7 yard average, was slowed up. But uh, they're all three in the game at the moment. 31 more, 48 Marquardt, 81 Jones on a second and one at about the 22 of Iowa State. And Moses Moore, a 200 pounder from Miami, Florida, a junior, number 31, carried on that play. And the referee, John Miskowski of Oklahoma City, indicates the first down. Dave Pittman, the great senior center for Iowa State, is considered among the better blockers in the country. You can see him here as he turns Joe Gaston. He should have raised up just a little bit higher. Had he raised up as he had that good position, he would have kept Gaston completely out of the play, but the block was good enough to make the first down. Jones flank to the far side, number 81, on a first and 10 from the 25. And Amundsen decides to keep it on the ground. Moses Moore, number 31, getting uh, his second call. One of the many beauties here at Memphis Memorial Stadium. Even though both teams do use the 4-4 alignment uh, defensively, They'll play it uh, great, quite a bit differently. Georgia Tech will stun a great deal. By that, I mean the linebackers will shoot with the snap of the ball. Iowa State simply hits and reads and goes to the ball. Ike Harris, number 85, is to the near side of the field. Opposite is 81. Willie Jones on a second down and 10. And the pitch out to Moore. And the Georgia Tech defense noted all year for its aggressiveness and a quick reaction, showing it again there as Chip Everhart and Putnall. And I was talking about their 4-4, and that time uh, Maxi Baum crossed me up by shifting one man to the strong side and making it a 5-2 alignment defensively, something they have not done all year, but uh, that they plan to do to try to throw off the blocking of the Cyclones. Crepley, number 91, the tight end uh, for Iowa State, was shaken up on the play, replacement number 84, Don Greenwood, on a third down and seven from the 28. Amundsen, number 12. And he finds his man, Ike Harris, a native of Edmonton, Arkansas, number 85, Ike Harris. This is Harris uh, from his split end position going against number 23, Randy Rhino. You see Rhino delivering a little bit of a bump there and then trying to stay with him. Amundsen laid it perfectly on target. Rhino just a little late getting there. All right, a beautiful 20-yard play, which moves the ball up to the 48 of Iowa State, a first and 10. They're going against Georgia Tech in the lead, 3 to nothing. Moses Moore and the Cyclones are in Tech territory at about the 43. Joe Harris, 50, and number 90, Bo Bruce, make the tackle of number 31, Moses Moore, that six-footer we talked about earlier, 200-pounder who had a tough break on the very first snap following the opening kickoff and losing it. And Tech then, from the 18, finally got it to the 15 and kicked a 32-yard field goal. Amundsen, fourth nationally, but in total offense. They need one yard now for a first down at the 43. There it is. Great balance. Moses Moore, the junior. And this drive, remember, by Iowa State started at the 13. They have moved deeper as Wisman, number 37, along with 47, Scott Bridge, make the tackle. The Cyclone mascot. Tech is very pass conscious. They've got uh, double coverage uh, in position against both wide receivers. They've been expecting the pass. Iowa State's crossing them up by going with the run. And a 19-yard beauty as we have a first and 10 now for Iowa State at the Tech 32. Tech is in the lead, 3 to nothing. Jones and Harris set away from the line. Amundsen, and what a variety in the Iowa State attack. Scott Bridge tripped him up as we look at Amundsen, number 12. Boy, they're interesting to watch, bud. They've got uh, many variations uh, in offensive sets, even though they're primarily in that eye, but they use the 
regular veer option, which you just saw with the quarterback keeping. They run the straight ahead handoffs. They run the isolation where the fullback Marquard will be leading the block on a linebacker, letting the tailback Moses break away from the block. From the eye, a flanker set away, split in, first and 10 from the 13. Hiding the ball beautifully. Receivers covered, now finds one. Beautiful number 85, Ike Harris. And it is now a six to three ball game as the Cyclones come back to score. Watch the touchdown again. Uh, we have an isolation coming up on Harris. Here he is, a little jitter step to get past the bump and run man. Amundsen was rolling to the right of the screen. Harris was wide open in the end zone, and Amundsen hit him on the run. 87-yard drive capped by a 13-yard touchdown pass. Amundsen to Harris, the ninth play of the drive. Now trying for the point after touchdown, we have Gedgen. Gedgen. Perfect. So we have a 7-3 ball game with 9 minutes and... 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter of the annual Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Be back in a moment. There's the Iowa State scoring drive, 87 yards in nine plays, and a variety of college football action. They lead 7-3 after Tech took the lead on a 32-yard field goal. Gitchin kicking off, picking it up is Mike Mercer, number 31, losing the ball, nearly hit the referee, it's still loose. Ooh, and Tech now backed up against the wall. You always wonder how somebody can drop it when there's nobody around. It's just uh, Let's excitement. Let's take a look at it. And he's trying to decide which arm to put it in. And uh, he decides not to get it in either arm. But he makes a truly sensational play here. His ball is hit, and this is really trying to get to it. He finally just barely brought it in. Still have to uh, pat on the back to Mike Mercer, who got back there to get it. But unfortunately now, the offensive team has it at approximately well it's right near the two with the first and ten and trailing now seven to three Jim Stevens number eleven the quarterback for Georgia Tech mm. Tech trying to get it out of their deep hole and they lined up that time in the Y formation to get the double blocking of the two lead backs however Iowa State closed with it as we take a look at the Georgia Tech offensive line and their backfield Greg Horn Owings, Healy, and the quarterback is Stevens. Ooh, another loose ball on a second down and ten. Stevens recovered his own uh, miscue there. One of the basics of football is the execution of the starting count by the offensive team. Different quarterbacks, even though you try to have all of them have exactly the same rhythm, being human never quite do have the same rhythm. And I'm sure that Stevens' rhythm with the offensive team is not yet as smoothed out as it will as the game goes along. Sophomore centering the ball for Georgia Tech, number 55, Pete Guerin of Fort Worth, Texas. Getting ready now to snap it to Stevens, the quarterback. Handing it off at the goal line for a two-yard gain to Southall, number 46, up to the five, so it's fourth down and seven coming up. Let's take a look at Croker, number 79 here, the fine end of Iowa State plays their defensive left end. He simply read, was not blocked, found the ball, moved in to make the tackle. From near the end line, Dick Bowley will do the punting. Phil Donowski awaits the kick with a following wind at 10 miles an hour. At the 42, it's Schweizer that has it for Iowa State. And now down on the sideline, let's get our first report from Bill Fleming. All right, thank you, Chris. I have a program note that I think our fans are going to be interested in. This Saturday, ABC's Wide World of Sports presents a Christmas special, the Munich Olympic Games Revisited. Jim McKay will host this program, which will look back at those 16 days of triumph, controversy, and misfortune that captured the attention and imagination of the world. That's this Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports at 5 Eastern, 4 Central. Okay, Chris. Thank you, Bill. From the 41 of Georgia Tech, Iowa State, leading 7-3. Amundsen faking a handoff. He uses his size beautifully, 6'2", 214 pounds, a senior from Aberdeen, South Dakota. Wiseman on the tackle as we look at the Iowa State head coach, his fifth year, Johnny Majors. Former tailback in the single wing at Tennessee, Johnny Majors from a football family. Gain of six yards, so it'll be a second down and four. Ball spotted at the 35. 
Amundsen now has rushed for 35 yards. He's passed for 32, including a 13-yard touchdown. Harrison Jones set away. And that's Ike Harris, who caught the touchdown pass earlier, inbounds inside the 30. Rhino forcing him out of bounds. Let's watch Harris again. This was a quick inside running fake to freeze the linebacker and bring him up, and then Amundsen simply raised up and hit Harris behind the linebacker. Let's watch him as he breaks downfield. Little inside fake by Amundsen, a little outside turn, and the ball is wide open complete. Both ends split, and we have a flanker outside the near side end on a first and 10 from the 27 of Georgia Tech. Iowa State with the ball. And from the widespread formation, Moses Moore tried to get outside. He did for a few yards. Putnall on the tackle, joined by McKenzie, number 43. Putnall, 35. Let's take a look at number 60, Bruce Elliott, the inside linebacker for Tech. He did not go with the inside running fake. He was ready to close on Amundsen, and when the pitch came to Moses, he used his speed to get outside and be the first man slowing him up in the Tech pursuit. Gangs in. 6.34 to go. First quarter, Iowa State 7, Georgia Tech 3, second and four for the Cyclones from about the 21. Beautiful timing as he pitches to his fullback, Marquardt, number 48. He's a junior fullback from Arlington, Minnesota. Carden, 32, the left linebacker, helping on the tackle on the last play. With 6.13 to go in the first quarter, Iowa State 7, Georgia Tech 3. The ball now is spotted, well, let's call it the 13. More important for Cyclone Rooters, a first down. Two men to the far side, Willie Jones, 81, and Don Greenwood, number 84. Top left of your screen on a first and 10. Amundsen. He's big and strong, Chris, and he's got good speed and reads well. The defensive right tackle, Tim Macy, number 45 of Atlanta, made the play. Let's watch it again. It's the draw fake. Amundsen rolling out on the option to pass or run. Everyone is back. He decides to run, and as he turns upfield using his speed, the defense reacts to pick him up after about a six-yard gain. Iowa State with the ball. They lead 7-3, to 520 to go first quarter. Now second and four. At the Georgia Tech 7. Watch. Did they get the first down? They're very close. Moses Moore. Helping to make the opening. The left tackle, number 74, Gillis, sophomore. Another sophomore, the left guard, Sherman Miller. They're really taking some charge that line of scrimmage, though. Aren't they, though? And Robinson does execute the starting count very well. His team takes off together. Now we look over to the far sideline where the linesman and his crew, and they need a little less than a yard at about the four. Third down. Those are little impressive statistics. Three for three and 39, four rushes for 42 yards. Moore and Marquardt in the eye behind the quarterback. Amundsen need a yard. They get it. Moore doing the job. Number 31 in the Cardinal jersey. That's the yardage they needed. Bridge helping on the tackle, but now it looks like a very powerful football team. Iowa State, the tied Nebraska. They defeated Colorado State, Utah, New Mexico, Kansas State, Kansas, Ames, Iowa. It's a university of 19,000 students. Now with a first and goal. The ball is on the two. They lead seven to three. Jones is to the right. I think that was a broken play, yes, but Amundsen made it into a gainer anyway. That's sure the type did. of reaction that you need. Let's take a look at it again. He turns, looks for the back hitting in, but the back went on the opposite side, as you can see. That was Marker, the fullback hitting in, who went on the wrong side. Amundsen just got great reflexes and enough athletic ability that even though he lacked the fake to pick up yardage. All right, brings up a second down and goal at the one. Here's a drive that started following a Georgia Tech putt at the Georgia Tech 41. There it is. 
Moses Moore, the junior from Miami, Florida, number 31, and his teammates are happy about that move. Fine inside fake this time by the fullback, Mark Ward. Watch him come over the ball here. A quick pitch by Amundsen. And Moore has superior speed. Elliott chasing him there, but can't get to him. Fine block downfield by Jones. Let's look at it again from the end zone. There's that great inside fake. The quick pitch. And Moore using his speed. Elliott can't quite catch him. And the cornerback, McKinsey, was knocked down by the wide receiver, Jones. Edgen will try the point after. Amundsen holding. 13 to 3. The kick is up. With 329 to go, it is 14 to 3 Iowa State as they went 41 yards in nine plays following the Georgia Tech punt. We'll return to Memphis following this message. Bill Fleming back at the Liberty Bowl here in Memphis, and a reminder that on Christmas Day, ABC brings you the season premiere of NBA basketball, featuring the Phoenix Suns against the Chicago Bulls, 3:30 Eastern Time. Then at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, it's the North-South game from the Orange Bowl of Miami, Florida, so don't miss these Christmas Day telecasts right here on ABC. Okay, Chris. All right. Following their second touchdown, the kick goes to Georgia Tech, Mike Mercer. Mercer, who fielded the last kick, hangs on this time and brings it out to about the 16-yard line where Tech, with only a 32-yard field goal, are trailing 14-3 to with 3.20 to go first quarter. A 19-yard return as we look at the... Uh, climax of a 41 yard drive but again I believe that Mercer wanted to atone for that uh, bobbling the ball however he'd been a little wiser if he just stayed in the end zone as his teammate was trying to tell him to do he'd also been four yards better there's Moore who scored the touchdown his first touchdown at Iowa State in two years and ooh, here comes the first penalty of the ball game and again, that's that starting count problem that we talked about with a new quarterback. The quarterback must control the team at the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at it. It's the offensive guard, Sergeant, jumping. First downs, Iowa State University, 8, Tech, 0. 3.19 to go, first quarter, it's 14 to 3. So the procedure of precision penalty is against Georgia Tech from Atlanta, Georgia. And the ball is back now at the 11-yard line. It'll be a first down and 15. Tech in the white and gold. And Cardinal and gold, Iowa State. Ellerbe to the far side. The play on the ground. It was Healy that carried. And I believe that this is Coker again, number 79, who's the defensive end, moved in against the split end, playing over the tackle. Moving inside, quickly adjusting to a kind of a spread formation, not going to, for the pass rush, but playing the run effectively. All right, coming up now with a second down and 13. At the 13, Georgia Tech territory. The rambling Rex having a problem getting wound up as we look at a great athlete. Triple threat, George Amundsen, number 12. Johnny Majors was talking about the stars of his defense. Uh, number 51, Carr, who made the last tackle, he believes is a truly outstanding player, is Croker, number 79, and 55, Jornup, their inside linebacker. Now they spread their offensive set. Georgia Tech with Jim Stevens, the quarterback. Ellerby, number 22, to the far side of the field, third and 13. Stevens, from behind, hit. And it's Croker again, number 79. Boy, is he alert. Isolated once more. Take a look at him. Uh, he's the best pass rusher on the Iowa State team, according to Coach Majors. Here he is going in, going around the block of Robinson. It looked as though he was behind the pocket, but he had speed enough to spin, get back in, get one hand, use his strength, and bring Stevens to the ground. Nine-yard loss, fourth down and 22, and a very difficult position in which to punt at the end line as we have Bali back there. Single safety now for Iowa State. It's uh, Moore who scored his first touchdown in two years. So now Iowa State again with great field position at approximately the same spot. Uh, have about two more yards than they did last time following the punt. It traveled 40 yards with the following wind and now Iowa State will snap it from the 43 of Georgia Tech leading 14 to 3 bud. And at this point in time, the Tech defense uh, had better come to life and control that line of scrimmage a little bit. They cannot afford to let Iowa State put another touchdown on the board. Amundsen, the quarterback, 81 Jones, 85 Harris, potential receivers. Oh, 
And you know when you have three great potential receivers and with the uncanny ability of a tremendous athlete Amundsen it's an awesome attack that they're throwing up against Georgia Tech. They're inside the 30 yard line for a first and 10. Bo Bruce 90 made the tackle on the quarterback Amundsen. We've seen some great quarterbacks this year Chris. Uh, a number of the schools but uh, thus far uh, Amundsen 6'3", 215 is as impressive as anybody we've looked at. He's unbelievable. From the 29 now of Georgia Tech Amundsen and Iowa State. First down. Four in motion. It comes out to Moore at 31. Moore got the taste of uh, six points and was <laughs> couldn't quite control the ball and had to wait for it to come down. McKenzie there quickly from his defensive halfback position to make the tackle at the 27. So it's a gain of two, a second down and eight. This is the Liberty Bowl from Memphis, Tennessee, the first of the major college bowl games. Many of the games to be seen in the future right here on ABC. We'll tell you more about that at our first opportunity as we have Jones to the left, Harris to the right, second and eight. In the slot, Greenwood. Marquardt is hit very, very hard, number 48. And it is a salute to Liberty always here at the Liberty Bowl. And uh, number 76 that's waving that flag. Jerry Allen. That's <laughs> right, Jerry. Keep waving it. Tech has gone back to the regular 4-4 defense. They've gotten away from the 5-2 that was new for them in this game. I think they'll probably do a little better, better with the defense that they've used throughout the season. I know Jerry Allen, the sophomore tackle from Burlington, Wisconsin, so all the folks in Burlington are proud of their patriot. Okay, third and six coming up, but right now the quarter has ended. We'll be back in a minute. Capacity House at Memphis Memorial Stadium, built for the folks in Memphis, Tennessee, for the 14th annual Liberty Bowl. You know, this reflects college attendance, which for the 19th consecutive season has reached an all-time high of nearly 31 million. As six major conferences set records this year, the Big Ten, the Southeast, the Big Eight, Pacific Ace, Southwest, and the Missouri Valley. Right now, it's Iowa State of the Big Eight on third and six, first snap of the second quarter, leading 14 to three, third and six from the 15th. And the first time that Amundsen had, has tasted a sack, Bo Bruce on a necktie, and chin high. Mm. You could see the Tech team getting ready to blitz from their goal line defense that time. They had nine men up within three yards of the line of scrimmage, and it was very effective for them. Ah, uh, it's a 16-yard loss. Fourth down and 22 now for the Cyclones. And uh, let's see what they'll do. They have a uh, fine field goal kicker, Bud, and uh, Gedgen, number They've 29. They've been known also, Chris, to have uh, fake off the field goal. That's right. Uh, something we might be a little bit aware of as they get ready to snap it. From the 37 plus the 10 of the end zone, 47 yards. The side wheeler's kick is up and no good. The 47 yard attempt and the Cyclones drive is thwarted now and Georgia Tech will take over first and 10 at their own 20 with 14 11 remaining in the first half. Iowa State leading 14 to 3. Here's Bill Fleming. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. ABC Sports has some outstanding events in store for your viewing pleasure this winter. Saturday, January the 6th marks the season premiere of the Pro Bowlers Tour, which will continue for 13 consecutive weeks. And of course, Saturdays mean one thing, the Emmy Award winning ABC's Wide World of Sports. And spanning the globe, we will bring you the world's greatest sporting attractions, the Harlem Globetrotters and the World Figure Skating Championships, just to name a few. Okay, Chris. Jim Stevens, number 11 of Georgia Tech from his own 20, gets four or five yards. Coming into that snap, I believe they had minus one yards. That's correct. Uh, I think, Chris, as we mentioned earlier, McShane, their quarterback who played uh, the first 10 games for them and uh, then missed three days of practice and was dropped from the squad by Coach Fulcher, uh, has taken away a lot of the cohesion of their offense, but they'll improve as the game goes along. Now they have a second down and six at their own 24, trailing 14 to three. And battling for yardage, we have Southall, number 46. These statistics are about as one-sided as I think you'll ever see them. 146 yards to minus one. 10 minutes and 18 seconds of possession against 442. And when you have statistics like that, I know the tech coaching staff has taken a deep breath and saying, how come the score is only 14 to three? And now they would certainly like a third down conversion. They need five yards at their own 25. Coming up at the 13-minute mark, mark of the first half, Robinson, 85, set away. Taking on the ground, 
Oh, he needs a little more yardage, and it appears he has the first down. It will be very, very close as the forward stake is right near the 30 on the far side of the field. Let's see where the ball is placed by the official. Bring it into the hash mark. It's uh, paralleling the field. First down, and that's number one, Georgia Tech. And that's an important number one. That does a little something for your confidence. <laughs> doesn't hurt up here in the booth either, bud. <laughs> it doesn't make you overconfident, <laughs> but at least gives you hope. That's right. From the 30-yard line now, Georgia Tech trailing 14 to 3 on the eye. And the former junior college quarterback is stopped and rather hard by Larry Hunt of Delray Beach, Florida, number 78. Well, Iowa State did a great recruiting job in the state of Florida. They let, uh, have a lot of Floridians on their team, bud. They've also got a lot of athletes. Their four linebackers are particularly good, I think. McCullough, Storm, Jorna, and Caratelli. Second down at six now for Georgia Tech at their own 34. Three, Talk about gang tackling. This is a postseason ball game, Iowa State. Going after the rambling wreck. We were concerned about whether uh, Johnny Majors uh, perhaps leaving Iowa State would affect the play of the Iowa State team and their enthusiasm and incentive. But thus far, it certainly hasn't. It's been the reverse of that. You mean, but as the night wears on, you're more convinced that he is going to the University of Pittsburgh? Well, I don't know. I think that uh, with a team like this, it'll be hard to leave. I agree. There he is, Johnny Majors. Jim Owings, 89, 85 Robinson away on a third down. And they do a great job of converting another third down. Very good. Owings, number 89. Let's watch him again. It was a sprint out pass moving to the right of the screen. There's just a little curl pattern. He starts back outside of the running fake, drew the corner linebacker McCullough up, and he was open. Owings. That's a Georgia Tech first down at their own 45. Coming into the lineup at center, Roland Bradford replacing Guerin. Bradford is a junior from Decatur, Georgia, which is the home of Frank Broyles, the Arkansas coach. From the 45 now, first and 10. Greg Horn, number 49 of Atlanta, Georgia, has McKillop, number 50, in on the tackle. Boy from Pleasantville, New York, along with Croker, number 79. We look at the tech offense, but Iowa State changed their defensive alignment that time, uh, over shifting one man to the side of the tight end to put five men on the line of scrimmage, expecting the run. This time they're back in the regular 4 4. Very fine receiver to the far side, number 85, Jim Robinson on a second and nine. Pitch goes to Horn. Look at that boy. Greg Horn of Atlanta, Georgia, number 49, pushed out of bounds by John Schweizer. Let's watch the play again. Horn was McShane's roommate, the quarterback that was dropped from the team, and he's had a tremendous amount of pressure. His hometown's in Atlanta. He wanted to play the game, has decided to play, and uh, has certainly given it the best effort of which he's capable. He almost broke this one. Good tackle by Campbell. As we had indicated earlier, there were reported threats on his life and his family's life if he should play the game. So undo the necessary pressure on youngsters. First and 10 now from the 30. 10-14 to go in the first half. And Jim Stevens on a, a keeper right back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Tom Carr, number 51, of Marengo, Illinois. There he is. Made the stop. When you're running that option play, Chris, uh, when the man that is controlling the outside plays deep and you keep, you're supposed to have some room to run. The line is supposed to keep those people inside of you from closing back on you as they did that time. Very good a look at Greg Horn, number 49. We have nine minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the first half. And what a halftime coming up. Both bands, Freedom Foundation salute to Liberty as we'll return in a minute. Bill Fleming on the sidelines here at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. We have a treat in store for you at halftime tonight. Not only do we have the Freedom Festival pageant, but we also have the two outstanding players named this year the outstanding offensive and defensive seniors. 
Heisman and the Maxwell Trophy winners, it just turns out, are our two award winners of the Chevrolet $5,000 scholarships. So we hope you'll join us here at halftime when Bob Lund will make those presentations. Now back to football action and Chris Schenkel. All right, Bill, we have a second down and 10 at the 30 of Iowa State. Georgia Tech with the ball. Coming in at the flanker position, number 22, Eddie Ellerby, replacing 89 Owings. He is way wide to the near side of the field. Oving is in the slot. Stevens handing off and a loss of five on Greg Horn, number 49. Jornoff, number 55 of Hudson, New York, a junior on the tackle. The tight end, Oven, number 86, normally is about a yard wider than his tackle. That time he was out in what we call a flexed position, about eight yards outside the tackle, making an obvious passing formation. Tech hoped to cross up Iowa State by running the draw play, but the Cyclones did not take the bait. Now it's another third down and 15 approximately near the 35 as we look at Jim Stevens, the junior quarterback. He's converted two thus far. He needs a lot of yardage. Look out. Wow, he's done it again. And that'll make him come of age, believe me. Number 86 making a fine catch on a scrambling throw by Stevens. Stevens that time was pressed just about as much as a quarterback could be pressed. He kept his poise. Let's take a look at it. There's a fake of the draw by Horn, and he's bounced around in there. He tries to go left, swings back around to the right, looks downfield, and this is the kind of vision a quarterback needs to be a great passer. He found Oven open and hit him for the first down. And we'd heard reports that he had a wonderful arm, and it's it was proven there on a 22 yard play as time has been called when players resume tech will have a first and 10 at the 13 of Iowa State back in a minute and that is the rambling wreck band a little bit to our left and you'll see them entertain at halftime an extravaganza Bill Fulcher a Georgia Tech graduate played as an 180 pound linebacker with the Washington Redskins tough great leader of young men Bill Fulcher it's been a tough week for Bill that's what I was going to say Chris he's had his baptism that there's more than football to coaching from the 13 now first down Georgia Tech with the ball trailing 14 to 3 Stevens number 11 all seemed to take off on him it, it just kept rising Intended for Jim Robinson, who is the number one receiver for Georgia Tech, having nine touchdown passes this year. There he comes back. Boy, he's a super player and only a sophomore. Not large, but he was covered by Swizer, 37 and 60. Storm, the linebacker. Second down and 10 from the 13. This drive started at the Georgia Tech 20. This is the 13th play of the drive with 8.48 to go. First half, 14 to 3, Iowa State. Oh, he gets the pitch off despite being hit extremely hard. Southall of Orlando, Florida, number 46, carrying on the play, nearing the 10. Jornoff on the tackle. And fine. they are inside the 10, but at the 9. And a fine run by Horn. Mm -hmm. He had to have very quick hands to catch the ball. And he ran through the first tackler, McKellop, and picked up about six more yards than you normally expect a back to get. All right, now it is third down and six at the nine of Iowa State with 8.22 to go. Time has been called. Well, they want victory here because both of them are off losses as they closed out their regular season. Capacity crowd watching, we'll return to it in a minute. And we thank uh, everybody at the Liberty Bowl for that welcome. There's a great new late night entertainment experience coming your way. Jack Parr, Dick Cavett, a host of mystery music and comedy stories making up ABC's Wide World of Entertainment, premiering in January. You going to be watching, Chris? Sure, I'm going to be watching, Bill. And a lot of football coming up, like the game you'll be doing on Christmas, Bill, the North-South game from Miami, Florida, right? Yes, sir. It'll be nice to be warm again. <laughs> okay. Running off to the left, Owings, number 89, and here's another big third and six for Georgia Tech at the nine, the 14th play of this drive. Oh, a floater. 
Touchdown, Tech. Jim Robinson. He may be 5'9", but he was about 6'4 on that catch. What a pass, though. Oh, yeah, but watch this little man. 5'9", 160 pounds. There's that inside break. He almost went to the ground. Now watch him way up there and stretch. But by the way, it was floated over. And just beautiful, a Namath type thing. That's what makes a great pass with the ability to drive the ball in there low and hard when you have to. And watch the effort here. He almost goes to the ground. Puts that hand down, regains his balance. And here comes that beautifully arched pass, as Chris talked about, and a long stretch by Robinson for the touchdown. Thigpen now trying for the point after for Georgia Tech, and it's no good to the near side of the uprights. But the score remains 14 to 9 with 8 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Let's watch it one more time. A half roll. Stevens setting up. Good protection. Got the ball away just before he was hit by Croker. And that long, hard stretch by the little 5'9", 160 pounder. Shades of Tinker Owens, whom we'll see in the Sugar Bowl as the Oklahoma Sooners will meet Penn State. Now to Bill Fleming. Okay, Chris, it's kind of noisy down here near the band. I guess you asked me to talk a little bit about NBA basketball returning to ABC for another exciting season. Good idea. In this, the biggest year of professional basketball, and thank you for mentioning Miami on Christmas Day, and I'll mention that you'll be in Phoenix Christmas Day at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time. Okay, Chris. All right. Following the Georgia Tech touchdown, here is the kick that follows. It is Willie Jones, number 81, coming out to the 10. He's going to be run out of bounds. Chased out of bounds. And chasing him out was Pee Wee Barnes, number seven. One of the five blacks on the Georgia Tech team that decided to play in the game, despite the suspension of their number one quarterback before the Georgia game, Edding Machan. This program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Now, George Amundsen from the 12, first and 10. The score is 14 to 9. Iowa State with the ball and leading. That was Strawn, who carries the ball, bud, for the first time. Number 33, a talented sophomore. He's been an uh, outstanding player, averaged 4.7 yards per snap throughout the regular season, and that's the Georgia Tech drive. Looked a little dark for them. They had minus one yard uh, in the first quarter, and then they put together this. 14 play 80 yard drive for the touchdown right with the ball at the 13 it's a second down and nine for Iowa State oh Willie Jones you talk about hiding the ball on the hip Amundsen did a masterful job of it Gary Faulkner on the tackle and the pom pom girls of the Cyclones love it Amundsen was rolling to the right of the screen here. The defense a little bit in doubt about whether he was going to run or not. Jones right along the sidelines. Amundsen hitting him perfectly. Jones a little disappointed that he didn't take it all the way. A 53-yard play. Willie Jones, the number one receiver for the Cyclones. And now the snap from the 33 of Georgia Tech. 14-9, Iowa State leading. First half, about seven minutes to go. Did he control it? Marquardt, number 48, the fullback. Whistle, number 37, along with number 48 on the play. Let's watch that 53-yard uh, pass reception by Jones again. Amundsen running to the right of the screen, delivered the ball on the run. He was behind McKinsey by about 10 yards, as you can see. Clear field ahead, but did not have quite speed enough to take it all the way. Second and 15 from the 38 of Georgia Tech. Iowa State in the Cardinal Red. The intended receiver, number 80, Cowan. Covered on the play by Randy Rhino. As we look at Willie Jones, Johnny Majors, his coach. Speaking of Rhino, he led the nation during the regular collegiate season on punt returns. And he was ahead of Johnny Rogers, of all people. He averaged 17.6 yards per return, and for a season, uh, that's quite an accomplishment, not only for Rhino, but for the blocking of his teammates. Third down and 15. He hasn't had a chance to receive an Iowa State punt because they haven't had to. 
intended for Willie Jones. Fourth and 15 now with 6.24 to go in the first half. The Tech defense is playing with a great deal more confidence than they did in the first quarter. They're varying it between a hard rush and dropping back to cover, and they've been successful with both, with the exception of the one time when Amundsen rolled out and they came up with respecting run and let Jones get behind them. Now, the first opportunity for Rhino, number 23, is we have the initial Iowa State punt by Cowan. Doug Cowan's punt. And they kick it away from Randy Rhino, and it takes a cyclone bounce, and it is inside the 10 and tech now. Six minutes and 14 seconds left on the clock in the first quarter. Iowa State, 14, Georgia Tech, 9. We'll be back in a minute. In the uh, light coat, that is the 1957 Georgia Tech graduate head coach Bill Fulcher, who was the head coach at the University of Tampa. He is only the fifth head coach in the history of football at Georgia Tech, bud. It's a tribute to the stability of the administration and the confidence they place in their coaches. Tech's had miserable field position, with the exception of the first play of the game when they recovered a fumble on the Iowa State 18-yard line. Robert Stevenson is in the lineup, 27 at the top right of your screen. First and 10. That was Healy, the fullback, carrying on the play as we get another look at Bill Fulcher. And Larry Hunt uh, shot the gap, uh, read the play well, and made the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. I mentioned field position Tech had had, other than that fumbled uh, recovery they had the ball on the two yard line the 16 their own 20 and their own eight on five possessions 85 Robinson away from the line along with 27 Stevenson second and eight this year Georgia Tech averaged 145 yards per game on the ground 182 in the air scored 13 times rushing 16 times passing Johnny Majors graduate of the University of Tennessee and he had some brothers that could really play the game, too. And his father is one of the great coaches. A third down conversions. Tex is four of seven. ISU, two of four. Here's the third and eight. Oh, look out. Wow, way first down to Haley, the fullback. I'm beginning to think that may be design play. <laughs> They're giving him awfully good protection. <laughs> He's picking out the open men. Let's take a look at it again. I know it's not a design play. It's a straight drop back pass. He looks as though he's pressed. Looks like it might be a safety. He turns up the field, gets a good block, and there's the reception to his fullback, Healy. But that is the fifth third down conversion by Georgia Tech in a row. Now from the 28 first down. I flanker and split in to the near side. Jim Stevens, who came in the game having thrown only 32 passes, three interceptions. He had completed 18, got his first touchdown pass tonight as Carr and Storm make the tackle a marker down. Holding. Against the Cyclones. We have four minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the first half. And don't forget the halftime. A spectacular from Memorial Stadium in Memphis. A salute to Liberty. A Freedom Foundation presentation. Valley Forge, the bands of both universities, the Chickasaw Council, the Boy Scouts, the men and women of the Air Force Reserves. Let's see if we can watch the defensive holding. This is Robinson, number 85, starting downfield and can't quite get the number of who's on him there. Number 19 of Iowa State, Jacobson. So from the 47, Stevenson. Throws into the flat. A good grab by Jim Robinson. From Atlanta, Georgia, that sophomore. Mm, that caught the touchdown pass, a 13-yard play. First down, Campbell on the tackle. And you can just see the confidence uh, surging with Stevenson. Uh, the first couple of possessions, uh, he was a little bit at a loss as to how to control the team at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they didn't get off on the snap count well. And Having moved them 80 yards to a touchdown, he's playing with great confidence and also indicating that he's got remarkable skills. 6'1", 190 pounds from a national city, California. Went to Southwest uh, Junior College in San Diego. And now, with the ball at the 40, 
of Iowa State. Four minutes to go, trailing 14 to nine. First down. Stevens hit by Tom Carr, number 51. And the advance is to, let's see, it's near the 36. So it'll be second down and six here at the Liberty Bowl. That's one of those plays that uh, surprise you with the yardage it makes. When the ball never leaves the line of scrimmage, uh, it doesn't look as though he's picked up very much but by staying right on the line and then turning upfield. If you get but a couple of steps, you've made it. Look at that doll. Yes. <laughs> Christmas doll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second and six now at approximately the 36. Three minutes, 17 seconds to go. <laughs> Number 46, Ruth Southall, tripped up by Larry Hunt, the defensive left tackle. There's the time clock here at the south end of uh, one of the early modernistic type football stadiums built for the city of Memphis, Tennessee for action by Memphis State University. Occasionally, Old Miss will come here and play Tennessee and They've got a annually hustle. it's the Liberty Bowl. Got a hustle to get it off before the 25 second count. Third down now. Can they make it again? No. 237 left. Bruce Southall thrown for a loss by Bozich, number 14 of Milwaukee, a sophomore. I think we were all thinking pass except uh, the Georgia Tech coaches and the Iowa State team. 222. Fourth down and about six. Dick Bowley, the punter, is in the lineup for Georgia Tech. So he comes to our left, and as you watch, going deep now, Schweizer, number 37. He's on about his own 10, kicking into a 10 mile an hour wind. Let's watch the action of the ball. Hmm. Oh, out of bounds. You called it. <laughs> yes. 32 yards, but that's insignificant because it went out of bounds at the four. That's what counts. So now we'll see what Iowa State can do in a minute and 56 seconds, playing time on the clock, that is. Leading 14 to 9 here in the Liberty Bowl. 50,164 watching on a terrific night for football. Temperature about 45 degrees. Iowa State now at the four. Moses Moore, Mark Ward, and Jones. Jones the flanker. Amundsen just gets it off and it's intercepted. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Faulkner. Gary Faulkner and the pressure on the passer did the trick. They lead 15-14. Look at the Tech. Look at that group. I believe that that was uh, Bruce, the defensive end, that put the pressure on so Faulkner could make the interception. He hit him just as the ball was thrown. And here he is bringing it back. Well, we often say college football in the fall. What a wonderful way to spend a Saturday afternoon. And college football on Monday night isn't too bad either, bud. Well, it appeared uh, Iowa State, having fumbled the first play of the game, made uh, two very simple-looking touchdown drives to go ahead 14-3 to and were totally in control. But the Tech team under Stevens really came back in a defensive play of this kind. You can see the ball underthrown, just overthrown slightly as Amundsen was hit. Faulkner making a great catch and slipping underneath the receiver. And now they go for, for two. Stevens, he's in. What a baptism of fire for Jim Stevens of Georgia Tech. But what a performance. That's one of those options to pass and run. He was out there. Let's take a look at it again. You can see him uh, as he rolls out here, looking downfield for his receivers. Having the ball in position to throw all of the time, which is a very important thing on this play. They're covered. He hesitates. He thinks now that he sees daylight, and you can see the daylight that he did see. This is a question of determination now. You know they're going to close on you. But he had the drive and the courage to hit it low and just get over the goal line for the two points. And again, bud. Once more, here he is hesitating. Sees the opening. And that's a seven-yard burst for an extra point. Two of them. And remember, Tech fans, he'll be back next year. Back deep for Iowa State, number 81, a dangerous kick returner. Wheeler, number 10, will do the booting for Tech. Ooh. 
That's Willie Jones. Look at that speed. Thing of beauty. Exhausted Willie Jones. 23 seconds on the run. Let's watch it again. Here he is bobbling the ball around. Dancing, dancing, and Tech closing on him. And there's no substitute for speed. You can't Five teach block. speed, can you? No way. But watch how wisely he runs here. Many backs in this position will overrun their blockers. Watch him hesitate now and let the blockers come from the right of the screen to get ahead of him. With the two men ahead of him, he now lets them get in position to block. Fine block there by number 31, Moses Moore, and he takes it into the corner for the touchdown. Well, two touchdowns in 23 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. The longest kick return for a touchdown in Liberty Bowl history, breaking that of Steve Engel of Colorado and 80 yarders. I told you he was dangerous. <laughs> That's a long way to go. <laughs> now, trying for the point after. That's Gedgen. Perfect. And we had one of the great catches of the night. Amundsen getting that high snap and putting it right back on the tee. That boy needs oxygen. Willie Jones, the number one pass receiver for Iowa State Cyclones. He is a junior and he'll be back next year. You want to see a little traffic? He was hesitating back there. Tech overran it just a little bit and he had the speed to turn the corner. Very fine block right there. Almost a clip, maybe. Now he cuts back all the way across the field, so he's run something like 153 yards on this play. Watch him hesitate now to let the blockers move up ahead of him. That's poise and control and vision. And then turning on the speed again, number 31 is Moses. Making the key block, keeping on his feet, blocking another tech man. And Jones has it in the end zone. All right, back deep now. As Gedgen, he has Mercer, number 31 and 22, Elber, Ellerby, num uh, number 22 of Georgia Tech. With a minute 23 to go, let's see what Tech can do. Now trailing 21 to 17. Don't go away. The halftime will be just as exciting. Beautiful balance run by McNamara, Kevin McNamara, number 29 of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Should point out, too, Kiss, we're so interested in talking about the great run that Jones made that the kickoff was one of those sort of squib kicks bouncing around down there, and the only reason you ever teach them to kick it that way is because they're not supposed to be able to time a kickoff return. Jones really set it up by bobbling it and then just standing there and letting him close on him. All right, Georgia Tech sends uh, pass catcher Robinson, 85 to the left. From the 35, their own, Owings, 89 to the right. Stevens. <laughs> that was Bruce Southall, number 46, a junior. Wilkie came over to cover defensively for the Cyclones. This is a uh, natural turf here at Memphis Stadium with less than a minute to go. And Iowa State bouncing back to take the lead 21 17. What a game. State in the three man rush now. Second and 13. The old Statue of Liberty. <laughs> it's hard to make it go when only three men are rushing. There are too many can. Close from the secondary as they pick up the read. Croker defensively again for Iowa State. As we look at 42, Rob Healy from Lookout Mountain, Tennessee. Oh, he's from beautiful country, bud. Yes, sir. We're in Memphis, Tennessee tonight, and we have 13 seconds remaining in the first half. Iowa State leading Georgia Tech 21 to 17. And a thriller. We hope you're enjoying it. Now it's third down and about seven. And unfortunately, time has run out here in the first half as Southall had a nifty run, finding the hole and dancing through. And there go the football players. 
in the first major college postseason game of the year. We'll be back with a great halftime. Stay tuned. Well, it's 51,000 excited fans here who have watched a great first half of football. Iowa State leading Georgia Tech 21 to 17, and seldom will you see more excitement in any 30 minutes of football. Right now, we're here at halftime, and it's my distinct pleasure to introduce once again to you Mr. Bob Lund, General Sales Manager of Chevrolet. Bob has been with us for the last two years presenting the Outstanding Player of the Game Awards at the end of the games. And now, Bob, we come to the culmination of this season where you have the privilege of outstanding players being with you to receive a $5,000 grand award. Right, Bill. This is, this is an exciting evening, and certainly it is a great climax to a wonderful season. And as you know, uh, during the season, we've presented uh, scholarships to the schools of the outstanding offensive and defensive players of each game. And tonight, we're privileged to present the uh, trophy as well as a scholarship to the outstanding offensive and defensive player. The offensive player of this year, chosen by the ABC sportscasters, He's a Heisman Trophy Award. He's an All-American. He's from the University of Nebraska. And of course, he's none other than Johnny Rogers. And here he is in action for one more time to take a look at Johnny. I don't believe we've ever seen a player who has had the moves of John Rogers. 17 Nebraska records, eight Big 8 records, four NCAA records, and one of the most amazing statistics of all, every time Johnny Rogers touched the football this year, he gained nearly 14 yards. Yes, sir, a true All-American, and we are delighted to have him here on the field of the Liberty Bowl tonight to receive this award, Bob. John, uh, certainly on behalf of Chevrolet, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you and to wish you well in the future. This is certainly great recognition for a great football player, and uh, you're being chosen the Outstanding Offensive Player of the Year. Congratulations from Chevrolet, Johnny Rogers. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, ABC for presenting me this award, and I would also like to thank everyone, because I'm very proud to accept this award on behalf of a minority student, a $5,000 scholarship, and I'd also like to thank Chevrolet for issuing the $5,000 for the scholarship. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johnny. And, uh, of course, with you tonight is your coach, Mr. Bob Devaney. And uh, on behalf of Chevrolet, I'd like to present this scholarship, Mr. Devaney, Coach Devaney, uh, a $5,000 scholarship to be used at the discretion of the University of Nebraska for any students whom you deem worthy of these funds. And we'll be using this for students who need this, minority groups who need help to go through college. We thank Chevrolet on behalf of the University of Nebraska. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. Good luck to you, John. And, of course, in just a few minutes, we'll be back with the Defensive Player of the Year Award, the senior who, according to the ABC Sportscasters who covered the game this year, played the most outstandingly during the 1972 season. But right now, on the field, the Iowa State University Cyclone Band. This band under the direction of Jimmy Howard Reynolds. Featuring the Tom Bob Girls. you're listening to is Shaft, the award-winning tune written by Isaac Hayes, who incidentally is Memphis' own Isaac Hayes. Very proud of him. Now, rise sons of Iowa State as the band moves into a new position. And let me tell you that after the Iowa State band, we'll be talking with the defensive player of the year. We'll be watching the Georgia Tech band, and then the fiesta resistance of the entire Liberty Bowl and that will be the Freedom Festival Foundation. Incidentally, you saw Sykes, the cardinal mascot of the Cyclone Band. Cy was kind of broken up in an automobile accident, and they worked all night long getting the mascot patched back up. And thanks to the alumni of Iowa State University who contributed some funds, they sewed him back together. And Bob John, who walks around inside of him, although he had his nose scraped a little bit, was also injured in that accident, but nothing serious. And we're glad to see Cy and the Cardinal back in action. Now the Can-Can, not from Paris, not from the Follies, not from Radio City, but from Iowa State, the band presenting the world's greatest Can-Can dancers from Iowa State University.
State. Iowa State University's head drum major is Carl Shortley. Margaret Thielen, the assistant drum major, Gay Renee Neiman, and Christy McLean were the twirlers. Barbara Hall was the big eight banner leader girl. And Lynn Bosberg, the head pom-pom girl. Jimmy Howard Reynolds, the conductor of the university bands. And a fine performance by the Iowa State Cyclone Band. Halftime score, 21 to 17. Iowa State in front. Back for more halftime activity in the... You know, there were a lot of great defensive players during the collegiate season of 1972, and it was hard to choose just one. But Bob Lund, we chose a young man from Michigan State University. Oh, and he's a dandy, Bill. He's the winner of the Maxwell Trophy. He's an All-American, and he's described by his coach, Duffy Doherty, as a young man who is capable of playing all 22 positions on the football field. Great young man, Brad Van Pelt. All right, let's take a look at Brad in action, a great cornerback and safety man for Michigan State. Brad at 6'5", 230 pounds, had that fiber to bring down the backs. He also had the great lateral speed to cover on passes, and when he hit you, you really knew it. Brad will become the first man in 20 years of the Big Ten to win nine letters, three years in football, basketball, and baseball. He intercepted four passes during the 1972 season and returned two of those for touchdown. Yes, it's true. Brad Van Pelt could have played any position on the Michigan State team, offense or defense. He was on defense, and he's here with us tonight on the field of the Liberty Bowl. Bob? Brad Chevrolet is very proud to present this fine trophy to you for having been selected as the outstanding defensive player of the year. And certainly, we're all very proud of you, and uh, you should be very proud of your, your record and the way you played this season. Congratulations, Brad Van Pelt. Well, thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank people at Chevrolet and just say I think it's really great what they do to encourage education as well as athletics. And as far as receiving the award, I'm just really happy that I can help somebody else out right now. Thank you. That's a great attitude, Brad. And uh, certainly uh, Chevrolet is now proud to present to you as athletic director at the Michigan State University, Mr. Burt Smith, this scholarship for $5,000, a Brad Van Pelt scholarship to be used at the discretion of the university for the education of young men and young women whom you deem worthy of that money. Thank you very much, Bill and Bob. We certainly appreciate everything uh, Chevrolet has done in this program, and we're looking forward to using this in our Ralph Young Scholarship. Thank you again very much. Thank you, Brad. Okay, thank you, gentlemen, and thank you, Bob, very, very much. Well, now on the field, the Georgia Tech Grand the Rec Band. This band, directed by Ben Logan Sisk, playing Proud Mary. The Yellow Jacket Majorette Corps and Flight Corps are also featured in this number. In case you joined us a bit late, it's been a whale of a first half of football. Iowa State leading 21 to 17. And now the band moves into a Beerstein formation. And a keg with a spigot on it. Solo twirlers, Don Carrico and Cindy Blee. As the mug begins to fill up, you've said it all. 